Hello, queens and kings. It's Dana Storco. It's Killer Queen Antique Jewelry. Um, it sounds weird not to say in a Sunday sale. And it felt even more strange not to say a Saturday sale. Well, obviously we're not having a sale. And I had discussed about doing a buy it now. Uh, I had 20 some pieces picked out. I had made a video. You know, it's really odd for me to show that style, that format. I'm always used to going live. So if you'd like me to do it, buy it now. And I probably wouldn't do brand new pieces. I'd rather show new pieces at auction. But if there's something that you'd seen and you wanted to buy it now price, if I haven't listed it and you'd like to see it and possibly purchase it, just leave a comment below. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to catch you up, let you know what's going on, not necessarily so much as in my life as in well, it, it does, it is my life and it does affect me because Bob is back to work. Uh, I haven't seen him yet. I'll see him tomorrow. Hopefully he comes into the office because I've got a pile of jewelry for him. And because I want to see him and s slap him because he's okay. He didn't have a massive heart attack. He had five, nothing, not like it wasn't that serious, but it was serious. He had five mini strokes. Um, I guess he's seeing a specialist and I'll keep him on the straight and narrow as much as I can. But he is back to work. And um, let's, let's just pray that he continues to be okay. Um, I did receive a card yesterday from one of you, and I will bring it to him tomorrow. Along with, he probably doesn't, probably shouldn't have donuts, but our mutual friend that I saw said that he's lost a lot of weight, which is bad because Bob was thin to start with. Let me turn that down a little bit. So what you'll see in the title is it's not clickbait i did find a bracelet worth five thousand dollars in a thrift store now when i found the bracelet i just thought it was pretty did it look like high carat gold to me yes yes it did but i checked it over thoroughly at the desk with the lady that was working and I told her, if I take this home and I test it, well, of course, I still have to get it XRF tested. But I have done a preliminary acid test on it. And not only a scratch test, where I put the high carat testing solution on the bracelet directly, the acid directly on the bracelet. And there was absolutely, well, when I did the scratch test, of course, it stayed. And then when I did pour it directly on the bracelet, if it wasn't high carat gold, I tested it with 18 to 24 carat, um, it would have turned black. Oh, these are some of the pieces that I've cleaned. And, you know, I always like to show you one after they're cleaned. But this is the bracelet. It's 41.1 grams of, I think, probably 21 or 22 carat. It's very heavy. Uh, once I have it XRF tested, I will take a percentage of the cost of the bracelet because I'm going to keep it. I'm not going to sell it. I've actually been looking for a big gold bracelet. And I think, you know, I probably saved a whole lot of money. But it, the money would have went to a charity. So I will take a percentage of what it would cost in 
Joan, and I told the lady at the charity, if it comes back that it's gold, you, you'll see me here with cash. I don't want to be recognized. I just, you know, I do want to recognize that it is a charity and that's that. So that's the bracelet. Um, these are the pieces that I've cleaned. Plus, I'm going to show you some new things. And I'll be coming back a few times this week as we get new lots in. Wish we had smell a vision here. Oh, I don't want to catch that light there. That's why I put the mat down. Because I do have glass on top of my desk. The hyacinth. I, this is my favorite time of the year when the hyacinth are blooming. They're not blooming in my garden. Those are hot house hyacinth, but they're still beautiful. Here's the night and day ring. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see. You know, I still haven't tested these, but they're probably just crystal. But look at them. I'm telling you, if I could fit that, I would. And it's way too big for a pinky, but just that small for my hand. Now, here's the heart. This is just from me manipulating it. It still has a little dink in it. But I'll take it to Bob and he'll make it perfect. sympathetically cleaned. You know, I wanted to keep a little bit of the patina in the engraving, all of the chaste work. Here's the adorable little vintage case. And look how beautiful the 1880s Vesta came up. Now, I'll try and stay on task and show you the pieces that I've cleaned first rather than showing you the new pieces. Here's the mutton fat. The nephrite jade. And I've had several clients say that they find jade is intimidating. So I'm by no means an expert, but I do buy jade to sell and I do buy jade to wear. So I'm happy to take the pieces that I have currently and show you the difference and tell you the difference, like where the jade is from. Um, what is the, what's the difference between um, a quality nephrite and a quality jadeite? Jadeite comes in a lot more colors, but nephrite can still be very valuable. But, I could, yeah, it's, it's a, that's a tale for another day, right? Uh, let's see. Oh, these are the moonstone. The gold moonstone earring. That's kind of breaking the, the rules there. These are new well, vintage. They're Edwardian style. But cluster moonstone earrings. Aren't they gorgeous? These are vintage, not antique, moonstone, Art Nouveau style. Erte. Oh. Absolutely stunning. Um, let's see. Am I breaking my rule? Kinda. But there are like things that are, this is new, this is new. I can show you the <laughs> mosaics once they were clean. How about that? Of course, that's going to get tangled in there. I'm not going to untangle it right this second. Here's the gorgeous clover. 
Look how bright and clean and beautiful it is now. That is a mandolin. That wasn't part of that lot, but look at the micro work on that one. Love it. Absolutely love it. There's a Daisy Bar brooch. Oh, and then there was the other long, thin bar brooch. These pieces are just absolutely gorgeous, aren't they? Ah, uh, let's see. I can show you the moonstone. That's the enameled Edwardian target moonstone. Come in and show you tight that the enamel's all Perfect. Love that piece. And then I will show you the Charles Horner, how it cleaned up. And then I'll show you some new pieces. Of course, I would have that hooked. Here's the horn case cleaned. Here are the turquoise, the Edwardian turquoise and the citrine pearls cleaned. I know it's zoomed in, but uh, it's so beautiful. And I think I had 14 carat on the screen. This is definitely nine carat. It is, it's Hallmark nine carat. Now, this is a new piece. And the only reason I'm going to show you it first is because it's over the, the other pieces. I will bring some. It's January. And we need some Aurora Borealis in our life. And this one is crystal. Of course, 1950s. But crystal on links. I'm telling you right now, if you put this on and look in the mirror, it's it's a better day. Just to have that gorgeous sparkle around your neck. Let's see what's up here next. The, the garnet. And where is that garnet ring? Here it is. Nine karat gold. This garnet ring and these garnets, oh my goodness. Red fire. I like hearts, I love hearts as much as the next person, but nothing, nothing says Valentine's Day like red. Now, nothing says spring like green. Here's the gorgeous tourmaline cleaned. It is a garland of beautifulness for your neck. Love it. Absolutely love it. 
I need to hang these back up so they don't tangle. Now, I still need to reset a couple of those tiny antique seed pearls. Like I said, that's not really a problem. Now, I can show you the new pieces. Now, I do have one here somewhere. I'm not even exactly sure where it's at, but there is another Ceylon blue garland moonstone necklace. The chain is handmade. That is, that piece is sublime. Now it is on 800 silver. I had an XRF because it's a little, uh, it's, there's a warmth to the silver, which means that there's more copper in the silver. And that's when it's 800 or 900, they add more copper to lower the silver content. And it's not for any other reason, like that piece, it would be too difficult to make in sterling. It has to be more malleable for you to do that roll over setting. These are the little gold lockets cleaned. The gold emergency money. And I likely won't sell the guitar because I haven't got um, an evaluation on it yet. Antique, you can imagine, antique little handmade charms or I saw one going for like 1,200 pounds. So yeah, prob probably won't be on the channel, but but I will tell you when it comes back with the evaluation what what it, what the value of it is. There's a new Art Deco, beautiful bows, smoky quartz. Of course, in gold, nine karat gold. You know, I like marcasite. Malachite and marcasite. Uh, let's see. Oh, um, th these. I've never, this is, it's still called a reverie when you have half. But this is antique foil glass cabochons. It's Art Deco. If this doesn't look like a peacock feather, I I really don't know what does. It's so stunning. Of course, I'm I'm a bit of a green junkie. This is Edwardian with the original peanut chain. Price of rays. Marcasite. Isn't it beautiful? Absolutely love it. Um, this is only vintage, but still pretty. Salem Blue Moonstone. I, you know, I don't discriminate vintage from antique, especially when it comes to a moonstone. I'm just a bit of a moonstone junkie. Um, and when you see the bracelet bar, <laughs> you'll see why. Zoom back out there. Now oh, this bracelet is Edwardian. Say long blue moonstone. Silver gilt. So if you would want 
the gilding removed, we can, or we have it more gilt. These are vintage, these Moonstone bracelets. Then there's the Art Deco Daisy bracelet. Now this bracelet, if you remember the bracelet we had last week that was Edwardian and Art Deco, I swear this is its heavier sister. Um, the difference, it, it doesn't have the great big crazy cat on it. It does have the little skinny cat, which I'll bet you it is still in the cleaning solution. All right. Um, but it will have that on. I'm not sure what that piece is. I've had a good look at all of these charms. There's a terrier and Scottish thistle. And this person traveled. I'm gonna guess they traveled because there are, that's a King Edward coin. This one is from the Netherlands. Um, they're from Victorian to, I think 1940 is the latest. That one's a rare charm. White lad tonker or white white bread tankard. Okay. Um, this is a naked cupid doll. It has a really cute backside. Yeah, there's a Canadian coin. What is that one? 1936. That's an early Victorian coin. There's a kitty cat in the dustbin in our waste can. An antique shoe. Uh, an Irish coin from 1934. Sixpence from 1942. Not, well, I guess it's later than 40, so 1942. There's a Scotty dog, a Samoyan. That's George V. That's India. That's an imp. A Netherlands coin from 1944. Loads of coins. Uh, that looks like the Johnny Walker gentleman. An antique teapot. George V and a dime, a Mercury dime from, is that 1940? I think, I think it's 1940. And of course the dog clip clasp. Yeah, this one is like 88 or 89 grams. And of course the tassel. So vintage or antique to vintage heavier bracelet. This one's a classic Cuban watch chain with the dog clip and the T-bar. Watch chain or bracelet. Let me see what else is new up there. I didn't really take down the the moonstones, but you can you can see them. They're all eternity. They all go some of them are Ceylon Moonstone Stone, and some of them are Rainbow, which means, I've told you all before, Moonstone and Labradorite grow together in the same area. So when you get the like rainbows coming through the Moonstone, it's actually a little bit of both. Okay. Did I show you, I think I showed you, oh, I hadn't showed you this moonstone. This one's vintage. It's in the style of Edwardian, but look, look at the blue. 
This one's probably 1970s, so 50 years old, not 100 years old. Nice curb link. So there will be, of course, a lot more in this week. Oh, I'm, I might as well show you this. This is a new, Some one of my clients asked me about um, a book chain. These are called birdcage links or ringed links. And this one is 16 inches long. She asked me for one without a clasp. And I'm just showing it to you because if she passes, then, then you all will see it. And there's only, you know, maybe five or six other book chains here for that matter. Um, it'd be helpful if you'd like to tell me what you'd like to see next weekend. I mean, I there's a lot. Oh, I forgot to show you the new glass. Ah, there will be a glass section. These are incredible fancy shapes and you guessed it kids. They are uranium. I have one like this, but it's not even this size. And it's got like cathedral glass links. Cathedral is kind of like Atlas glass. It's kind of layered. It's crystalline looking. It's just, this is just a, an incredible necklace. And this one is new and this is a rare, it's not really uranium. It's a rare color change. And this one's really short, this pink and blue. This will glow red. It's cadmium, of course. So, since I have, like, uh, this one, I probably won't alter that one. But I do have this one. And it's short. I'll probably, if I have a minute, I, I laugh when I say that. I'll probably combine them and just make a really fabulous necklace out of them. Out of those two. Or, well, I don't know, maybe a necklace and a bracelet. But it is very rare bicolor glass. And I think, I guess the last thing I will show you, there is a vintage, yeah, more moonstone. Peach moonstone floral cluster ring on rose gold and this one looks very pretty on the hand oh <laughs> i just looked down and saw that there's a whole bunch i haven't shown you oh. how pretty is this though very state minty i guess i I, I have large hands. Little tiny rings don't look that hot. Okay, this one is tiny, but mighty. It is a Scottish Dirk, which is a sort of scabbard. It's um, Montrose, and I'll test it, but probably Amethyst. That crystal. Now, that looks like a premature baby next to the largest Georgian Montrose agate piece that I've ever, ever, ever had and probably ever will have. It's heavy, it's fabulous. It probably was a cloak brooch. It's that heavy. It's fabulous. I uh, didn't show you this and the box is sitting here. Bohemian Dragon's Breath. In the original box, 
from Jerusalem. It's a brooch. This would make an incredible pendant. The earrings are easily put on for pierced, but they are on screw backs right now. And that's how they would have come originally. Okay. One more fabulous jade piece. Why not? And then I'll show you the final, the final piece that I'm going to show you tonight. Now this is jadeite. I'm going to show you the velvet. This is fine jadeite. You get this velvet. And this color. Now, this necklace is over 100 years old. There are a couple little uh, nibbles to some of the jade. There's one right there. And all of these stones could be moved to the back. That's not a big deal because it is on, it is linked. Oh, there we go. It's a little twisted. And then there's one, this one, that has some loss in the corner. Jade is not a really hard stone. It really is more suited for a necklace. If it's in a ring, it should be well um, mounted. The fact that this, these stones are left open like that, if you ever had a ring like this, it would... It would destroy it. Look at the clasp. This just fits me. I think it's 14 and a half, but we could put more chain. You could put chain, you know, I have antique chain and you can make it longer in the back. If you love this color, if you love fine jadeite, and you love this revelry. Oh, it, it literally, it takes my breath away. And now, okay, looking down, I think this is the last piece I, I need to show you. Well, tonight. Anyway. It's Georgian. It's a Georgian Regency, which is late 1700s, early 1800s. Pieces like this would have inspired Queen Victoria to loving agates. It's dendrite agate. Um, it looks... If, if you didn't know better, you would think that it's fossilized plant. And it's not, it's mineral. Look at this even looks like, I have to like block that light there. That looks like a dried, like daisy or something in it. This looks like a seaweed or it's wild. It is sterling and it is gilt. Now, why would it, why wouldn't they, it be in gold? Gold was not because they were like trying to pass it off silver as gold. Gold was heavily taxed at this time. So you'll find a lot of pieces either in pinchbeck or silver gilt. So some of the finest gems that you can find in Georgian jewelry Number one are paste, believe it or not. It was the technology that, that makes them so valuable. The quality of them. Or the finest gemstones are either set in sterling or pinchback. I wear six and three quarters and this bracelet just fits comfortably. So I would say you could be between a six and a six and three quarters 
without altering it. Can we alter it? Yes, we could add links to it in the back and you would never see them. Now, this bracelet, today you would probably wear it because it would be more practical because we work, we don't have servants or maybe we do. You would wear the pendant hanging down your wrist. But a fabulous Georgian woman would wear that pendant on, onto her hand. This is undoubtedly one of the earliest agate bracelets that I've ever had. And if you Google and write agate, um, Montrose is the most desirable color, but dendrite and moss agate are the most valuable. So that's it for me, kings and queens. I mean, the great news is, is that we have Bob again. Now I think he's going to cut back his hours and that's good because I don't want him to overwork himself. But I'm just so happy. I'm just so happy to have my friend back and I'm happy that my friend's gonna be okay. And my friend and our jeweler. I wanna thank L for sending Krabby Bob a card. I'm sure he's gonna be tickled. I can't wait to give it to him tomorrow. Have a wonderful rest of your evening, kings and queens. Thank you for spending this um, 37 minutes with me. I'll see you again very soon. Uh, Friday will probably, Thursday or Friday, we'll do camera up and do a live preview for the Saturday sale. So we can all chat and then Saturday, instead of chatting for an hour before the sale, we'll uh, I'll say hello and then get to it. I love you all. I'll see you very, very soon.